Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number one of this brand new series on how to create a WordPress plugin from scratch. Welcome again. In this first tutorial, we're gonna take a look on all the basics to set up our first amazing plugin in our beautiful WordPress installation. Before starting, because we are coding and we're gonna code a lot of different things, remember to set your wp-config.php file in your root directory installation of WordPress to define the wp debug global settings to through. If it's not set to through, every time you have an issue or every time you write something wrong, like a, a bad PHP code or something like that, your entire website is just not gonna print. You're gonna see a blank page. We don't want that because we're under development, so we need to get all the debug information possible, all the information that we need to understand what we did wrong and how to fix our code. So just remember, this is the only requirement that you need for like to follow this tutorial. Set your WP debug to through. Okay, let's get started. If we access the installation like a regular WordPress installation, this is the usual structure, like folder structure that you're gonna see. And as I said at the very first lesson of the WordPress 101, the only folder that you should care about your WordPress installation is the WP content. Everything else, all the files, WP admin, WP include, you should never touch those files because those are part of the core installation of WordPress. So by accessing the WP content, you're gonna have a list of all the folders that you can use and you can touch in order to create your custom things. And I'm sure you already guessed that we need to create our plugins in the plugins folder. By default, WordPress comes with uh, Akismet and Hello Dolly to pre-install plugin that they show like a pretty uh, regular structure and then the usual index.php with an empty comment just to avoid the direct access of the this folder, direct access of these files if a user gains access to your WordPress installation through a browser. So let's start by creating a new folder and let's name the folder with the same name that we want to assign to our custom plugin. So in my case, it's going to be alicad uh, plugin something like that. And um, the requirement, the kind of the only requirement of WordPress on how to about creating a plugin is having a unique name for your plugin. And this unique name has to be carried around from the folder to the main PHP file. If this name is not unique, your plugin will have some conflicts of updating or versioning with other pre-existing plugins. So before creating your folder name, just do a check inside the official plugins repository, just click add new and search for the plugin name that you want to create. So in my case, it's going to be Alicad plugin and see if we have any results, no matching results. So that's perfect. That plugin name doesn't exist and I'm safe it to use it. Let's access this folder and let's open this folder in sublime text. Inside our newly generated plugin folder, the first file that we need to create is a, a PHP file with the same exact name of our plugin folder. So in my case, it's alicad-plugin.php. And this is really important because by default, WordPress does this. WordPress checks all the folders in inside your plugins installation and detects the PHP file that has the same name of your folder and automatically lists all those things inside your plugin directory. But of course, having an empty file is not enough for WordPress to recognize that this is a plugin and you want it to be listed in your plugin directory. So let's create, let's open the PHP tags. And as usual, because this is just a PHP file, we're not gonna have any HTML written here. We can avoid to close the tags and this is actually really recommended, not closing tags. Then we define a global setting for our package and say that this is a package called Alicad plugin, something like that. And now we need to define some global settings in order for WordPress to recognize our plugin. And this section is 
pretty much identical to the uh, comment section that you write in your style.css when you generate a new theme to give the WordPress the ability to recognize the theme and specify some unique attributes to um, customize the theme. So we're gonna do exactly the same. Let's open again our comment block and don't use inline comment but use comment block, that's really important. And let's write the first is the plugin name attribute and remember to write it exactly as I do otherwise WordPress cannot recognize that specific attribute and the plugin name is alicad plugin oops plugin then the second attribute is plugin URI and not URL is URI and here we need to specify the unique URL of that plugin in my case it's gonna be just simply HTTP slash slash alicad.com but whatever if you have your plugin hosted on a specific file or on a github repository you can set up that specific URL so if for example I have this plugin in a subdirectory of my website I can specify the unique subdirectory so if they click to view more details about my plugin they're gonna get redirected to that specific URL the third parameter is description and we can write simply this is my first attempt on writing a custom plugin for this amazing tutorial series something like that do we like it i guess so and uh, here you can write html uh, just really simple html you can have like strong bold italic uh, underscore like underline all this kind of stuff like really really simple html don't use like uh, crazy html markup that are not recognized then we need to specify the version and my version is the 1.0.0 then we need to specify the author the author is Alessandro, double quote, Alicad Castellani is my name, and then the author, URI also in this case, and this is gonna basically redirect the user whenever they click on the name or the author of the plugin, so in this case on my name, then you need to specify the license of this plugin. And usually the plugins are all open source license, like releasing a plugin on WordPress, on your future repository of WordPress that is not open source is really hard. I don't think it's like recognized uh, or stuff like that. It's like not allowed to publish a plugin that is not under open source license. So usually when you're building a, a, a plugin, always set a GPL v two or later that's my kind of my favorite open source license otherwise there's like apache license mit license just check in the gnu official documentation to see which license matches properly your needs and just use that and then we need to specify like in the theme the text domain of our plugin in my case it's gonna be alicad plugin let's save it Let's go back in our WordPress installation. Let's access our plugin directory. Let's refresh and look what we have here. That it's pretty amazing, right? We have Alicat plugin, the description, the link to click visit the plugin site. And if we visit the plugin site, we're gonna go to this fake URL that doesn't exist, alicad slash plugin. I don't have anything, but it goes to my website. And if I click on the uh, my name, it goes actually to my website, so I click on the other name, and then we have the version, and we have by default all the native links of WordPress of a plugin, so to activate, edit, or delete the plugin. And of course, if we click edit, WordPress automatically goes inside the editor of the plugin and lists all the files that we have here, so we could potentially also write our own plugin directly inside WordPress, but that would be kind of crazy, right? And of course, if we try to activate it, it's gonna be activated, but there's pretty much nothing here <laughs> because we didn't write anything. So we can activate and deactivate the plugin and nothing is gonna break our website still work. If I refresh, I'm using the latest 2017 uh, theme of WordPress and nothing is happening because of course it's an empty plugin, but hey, with few lines of code, we generated a pretty legit first plugin installation. Isn't that great? The last thing that I want to do before concluding this first episode is creating a really important and really necessary file in order to have a little bit of security in your plugin. And this file is the 
standard index.php inside your installation because if someone tries to access directly your plugin folder, it will not go into mm, all the available files that you have because you cannot access and see all the files, but it will be redirected just in case that happens, it will be redirected to the index file. And in the index file, what we wanna do, we wanna just print an empty PHP with silence is golden and is the same technique used in another PHP file here, like in the index.php in the default plugins. And if you notice, it's also in the index.php in the WP content folder. And that's how WordPress deals like in a super quick and dirty way on like direct access into folders that we don't wanna really give direct access to it because it's, it's kind of sketchy, right? The last thing that you could do, you could simply in the main PHP file of your plugin, just print right after the basic attribute of your plugin, just by leaving an empty row, the license that you're actually using. And I grabbed this license directly from the GNU website and the license that is described here is GPL version two. This is not 100% required, especially when you're building a plugin, but it's it's absolutely required if you decide in the future to publish your plugin into the WordPress official plugin repository. So uh, why not put in it by default as the first thing so we will not forget in the future. And that's pretty much it. This is the very first and very, very simple video about the plugin development series. In the next video, we're gonna spend a little bit of time on tackling all the security precaution and safety precaution in order to start developing a plugin without worrying too much of exposing uh, uh, vulnerabilities or leaving backdoors open to our WordPress installation or whatever the WordPress installation will use our plugin. So next lesson is going to be way more awesome than this one. I really hope so. Well, it's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.